new problem today. Actually, we had a guest day that told us that there's a bunch of water in the hallway on the port side where we had the two cabins on 1148. And we cleaned it up, didn't really see anything. Then today it happened again. And we did a little more investigating and it appears that we have a problem with our track. So this jib track that you can see here is a leak in the end here. And I'll show you inside, but it looks like somebody tried to fix it before us and didn't fix it the right way. And now the fossil core is rotten out underneath that, which could potentially mean we remove the whole track. Or we might try to fix it from underneath and, um, and then put some, sneak some butyl tape under there and um, try and seal it that way. But water definitely cools here and it's been flowing for a long time. Here's what you can see of the problem on the inside and we try and route that out a little bit and now we're going to let it dry for as long as we can and then fill it with epoxy and re-drill it and re-bolt it in. But this is what the top of our ceiling looked like and you notice this extra wood piece here which just seems to indicate that this was a problem before that they did not fix 100% and ended up supporting the wood with another piece of wood. So that was not a good fix. So we're working on the jib track today. We had this really horrible leak here Right at the very end of the jib track here, the last couple of times we sailed, looked like a rusty streak that was going down the top side of the coach roof here. Um, but it wasn't rust, it turns out. Um, and then lo and behold, we found that we did have a leak on the other side, on the other jib track as well. So what was happening is obviously it's not bedded properly anymore. Uh, we got the leak actually through here. And, and then, you know, there's two pieces of fiberglass with balsa wood in between them. And that balsa wood was certainly very moist and beginning to rot in there. So that stain was actually from balsa wood more so than it was from rust. So you could see on some of the screws, some of that balsa wood core that was in there. Um, so we've removed the entire track, um, pulled everything out. Uh, we did find leaks mostly in these first few holes right here because this is the downside where the water pooled and it did drain into there. So our solution for this is going to be we're going to wallow these out as best we can. Um, we're going to then uh, mix and pour epoxy into these holes. So that way we'll have a nice epoxy bed around the hole where the balsa wood was. Um, and then we'll drill new holes through that epoxy and then re-bed it and reseed it back in there. So go ahead and do the whole job while we're at it. So talk a little bit about what you found on the end here with the bent screws. Yeah, so we've got the one piece I have it here. Um, this is, of course, the track stop right here. Um, that track stop had both of these long screws were completely bent, um, probably about 20 degrees. Um, so they obviously suffered some severe pressure and it had to be from this jib track um, being pulled and going into them so it was odd to find that this one was on the other side so the screws are not bent but the ones that I pulled they definitely were yeah show them in the bucket there the screws um I don't have them in there there's some on the sheets look at that screw yeah. Oh, and it had some... Well, that was from the uh, stop. But oh, the... that came out of the stop? Yeah. Interesting. So those obviously had some stress and undue stress and pressure on them. Yeah. So, leaks, no good. Now, subsequently, of course, we 
we've known that you're supposed to rebed your blocks every now and then, but we never thought we'd have to rebed the whole track. So we're gonna we're gonna wallow those out. Don's gonna be down below with a bucket holding it up. We're gonna catch some of that debris so we don't mess up the cabin too much. Let this dry out really nice. It's already pretty dry. Um, and then we're gonna come back in and do that epoxy project. So pretty pretty substantial project, but it's the right way to do it. Here's the inside. This side was not leaking internally as bad as the other side. Looks fine. This side, you can see on the end there, the last one is really brown and that one will have to be probably ratted out the most. The rest from the further you get up the track, the less issues you have, but we're going to do all of them. Do it right. So here's all the stuff we routed out of the first hole. That's all wet balsa wood right there. So we really opened that up, got a pretty big cavity in there, and that'll be fine. It'll dry up nicely, and then we'll fill that with the uh, epoxy. But here's how we're doing it. We got a regular Allen head wrench on the end of there. Get it in the hole, and you'll see what happens here. <laughs> That's a lot of junk. Yeah, that's definitely where the problem resides. So, again, I think it'll dry out nicely, and then we'll we'll get the epoxy in there and hopefully seal it up. What have we here? A bucket of rotten balsa core. It, well, I won't tell you what it kind of looks like. It kind of smells like that, too. Okay, Dom, we're getting ready to start this epoxy job. So we have. I can't wait! Yeah, we have 26 bolts on those um, jib car runners. So we got 26 holes to fill. We probably dug them out, I'm going to say almost an inch, you know, inch and a half possibly in diameter. Um, and then it's only probably about an inch deep. But that's a pretty good sized puck right there that we're trying to fill with this epoxy. We may not have enough, but we'll, we'll try to get at least the first runner done today. So we went with the uh, 105 resin from West System, the 209 slower hardener. We wanted to go slow because we got so many different holes to fill. We're gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. We have about a 25 minute window um, before we really start to get too hard to be able to use the product. We also went ahead with the dispensing tools here. So these dispense the exact amount of resin that you need. And then it also dispenses the exact amount of hardener that you need as well. Once we get that mix into the bucket, we then are going to do our best to put the collodial silica in there filler. This allows it a little bit of um, softness, if you will, so that it is less susceptible to cracking. It'll give us some fill as well, actually make the product a little bit more product to be able to deal with. But this is very difficult to put in there. This 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 can right here weighs about a half of an ounce. That's how powdery this stuff is that's in there. So we have to mix that into the resin base as well. Again, only 25 minutes of working time. And lastly, we're gonna try to pour all of that resin base into this caulk gun. Um, and then we're gonna seal it with the end of the caulk right there. We'll cut our tube off and then start filling it. So that's where we're headed. So that that that's the big deal. We got plenty of time until we put the hardener in. So we go with the resin first, then we go with the hardener, and then we go with the powder, and we need to work relatively quickly once we do all that. All right, here we go. Ready to get started? I'm also going to go with the Kentucky Derby Rainy Jockey Routine, where they have goggles, multiple goggles. They flip them off and keep flipping them off when the run, mud comes on. So I'll put about three gloves on my right hand at least, because that's I'm right-handed. Once that one gets sticky, peel it off. I got another glove handy. That's so sweet. Yeah, we're fine there. Ready? Here's my 
part in this project so far. I applied to the underside of the deck tape so that we can make sure none of the epoxy comes out. So there's your tape and we are also going to hold a block under it to try and make sure that nothing comes down and gets all over our boat. But you're going to be topside because you're going to be up there when I'm dispensing the epoxy into it as well. And what will I do up there? Make sure if I have a spill, if I have a problem, you have to have the acetone and mineral spirits ready to be able to try to clean up the spill. Oh. But hopefully that won't happen. No. We'll work together. Okay. Here we are filling the holes. And uh, it's not been too bad. Too much of a rush process. But the holes keep filling. It's not just filling one little hole. It's filling a whole cavity and it just keeps filling and filling and filling. And then it's got these little air bubbles in it that pop eventually. And um, it's quite interesting. So there's holes. There's an air bubble right there. And that'll pop, and then the whole cavity will show up. And now for the big reveal. We're taking the tape off. Did it work? Woo! I think it worked. Nice. Yeah, there's your nice epoxy plug all the way around. Oh, nice. Came right out to the tape a little bit there. Nice. It kind of stopped it where the old ring was. Yeah. So it filled that washer area. And that washer will uh, bed on there real nice and tight. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. This is how we had to put the track back on 26 times, 26 times. All done. All that's left now is to go for a test sail and uh, make sure that everything holds and then wait for a big rain and make sure it doesn't leak. We could spray some water on it. but. There's some rain coming, so we'll just wait for that.